Just like the famed poet, Notorious B.I.G., I love dough. It's probably the thing that separates the good pizza from the great. And I'm curious how it's done, which is why I'm here with Trevor, the GM here at Fireside, to learn more. So, Trevor, what goes into making great dough? It's pretty simple. It's just four ingredients that go into dough. You got flour, yeast, water, and salt. Flour, yeast, water, and salt. So just four ingredients go into making pizza, pizza yeah. dough. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, the ratios may vary a little bit from uh, pizza dough to pizza dough, but for the most part, those are the those are the magic ingredients that make all the dough happen, if you will. So I know I'm familiar with flour, I'm familiar with water, I'm familiar with salt. What is yeast? Well, yeast is actually a part of uh, the fungus family, and it actually feeds off of these uh, fermentable sugars that exist in the uh, flour that we get, typically a high gluten flour. Once it feeds off of that, it produces carbon dioxide, which creates all the little bubbles, little pockets of air that you find in a lot of the crust. And uh, once you bake it off, that sort of locks them in place, so that's why they're sort of frozen there, captured in the dough. So, uh, what do yeast bring to the party? You're saying they, they, they help make the carbon dioxide. Uh, what, what does that do for me as a pizza consumer? Yeah, actually, without the yeast, essentially the dough would just be a cracker. So it wouldn't rise, wouldn't have any texture to it really. So uh, yeast is one of the most critical parts. It what makes it all hold together. So it makes it that chewy sort of uh, texture instead of like eating Cheez-Its. Correct, Let's... correct. It's more of a cracker essentially. So how does yeast do that? You say they make carbon dioxide uh, from some of the sugars in the flour. How do they go about doing that? So because it's a fungus, it actually is literally feeding off these sugars specifically sucrose in general as uh, the sugar that it likes the most and that's the most fermentable of the sugars. Uh, it feeds off of that and when it eats that it creates, as I mentioned, that carbon dioxide as a byproduct from it. And uh, yeah, so because it's a living fungus essentially, it's uh, it has to eat off of something so it goes right for those sugars. Yeah, I mean it's so cool that we put fungus in pizza dough to make it taste great. So are you guys making dough uh, this morning? Oh, we are, we are. Do you mind if I give a hand? I would love to come show you. All right, let's do it. All right, Trevor, what do we got? All right, so what we have here is, as I mentioned, there's a couple different kinds of yeast. This is the dry active yeast. So we're gonna activate or bloom the yeast to get it started. So that way it's starting to kind of be ready to feed off of all the, the gluten in the flour. So I take our water from our faucet here and I get it up to 100 degrees. And I want specifically 100 degrees because that's the perfect temperature for the yeast. It's not too hot to kill it and it's not too cold to where it won't activate. We do uh, a liter of water and seven tablespoons of yeast. Okay. And then once we get that in there, we'll give it a good mix and let it give it a little rest to uh, wake up, as we said. I would hate to be woken up like that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Very abrupt <laughs> awakening. Ah. That's it? So how long does it take for the yeast to, to wake up? Uh, typically about five to seven minutes. Okay, well that's, that's less time than it takes me to wake up in the morning, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Myself included. All right, Trevor, so our yeast is awake. It is. What's the next step? Now that our yeast is awake, we're going to go ahead and give it one little stir, make sure that it didn't catch in any of the corners down there. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and turn our mixer on and add our yeast to the flour and salt. So that yeast is going to take, eat those sugars in the flour and then like kind of burp out carbon dioxide, exhale carbon dioxide. Yeah, as, as it starts to form, it'll create these little gas bubbles. The longer it sits and rests, the more those gas bubbles are going to become prominent. So I'm going to continue to add a little bit of water here. Now, how does gluten work in, in pizza? Uh, and how, how does that kind of help with, uh, like factor into the dough? Yeah, well, the gluten exists inside the flour and once it's, once it's hit with water, that's the purpose of the water is it kind of creates that stretchiness, that elasticity that exists in there. So the, the yeast gives it its airiness um, the water and the, the gluten create the stretchiness. Like the sort of chewiness. Chew. Yes, okay. yes, that's the chew. So the, the stronger the gluten bonds, the chewier it's gonna be. Yeah, you can kind of see that now that you've added water, it start, it's gone from like the consistency of maybe wet cement to like the consistency of Play-Doh. So this will continue to, to mix up here. We give it, as I said, about 10 minutes. Once that comes up, we'll take a look at it and you'll see the difference that, yeah. that occurred from when we started to when we finished. All right, so our, our dough's ready, Trevor. Yep, it's all, it's been rested, it's been mixed, it's good to go, so what we're gonna do now is we're okay. gonna scale it off into our portions that we use for when we uh, prepare pizza later this afternoon. Okay, let's do it. So
turns out, you can make great pizza dough at home too. All you need is flour, yeast, some salt, and a little bit of warm water, and some scientific know-how. Who knew biochemistry could be so delicious? Do you love science? Of course you do. So stay up to date on all things science around Scentsy by subscribing to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SciAroundSensi.